Hey guys, it's Chris here, and today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at cheap versus expensive with hockey skates. It's been a number of years since we did a video like this. The last one was over nine years ago, and a lot has changed with skates, a huge amount. We have the top spec skates, in this case, the FT6 Pro from CCM's Jetspeed range, and then looking at the completely bottom of the range, Jetspeed FT670s, which is completely two polar opposites. The price difference between these two skates is huge. These are gonna be retailing for roughly over $1,000, whereas these are gonna be around the $250 to $300 price mark, and that's US. That is massive. What in the hell can justify these being so expensive versus these? Are there really that many differences? Let's break all of that down in this video. And of course, as always guys, before we jump into the video, there's a bunch of you that watch our videos every single week when we upload, but you're not subscribed. So if you don't mind, we'd really appreciate you subscribing. It's free and it helps the channel to grow, helps us to be able to get access to products like these to make these videos. So if you like what we do, thumbs up and also subscribe before we jump in. Now, of course, like all of the videos that we do, I'm gonna start at the base of the skate and then work my way upwards with both of these and kind of highlight the differences between them. When we look at the entry-level skates, in this case, the FT670s, the runner on these or the blade is just a standard stainless steel blade. There's no extra properties, there's no coatings, there's no nothing. When we look at the FT6 Pros, the top spec or elite level skates, these feature CCM's black step blades that have that DLC coating. Now, that coating on these runners makes them look black, kind of like chrome, it looks sick, but what properties does that actually provide the player or the blade with? Essentially, these black blades are gonna be incredibly good at maintaining their edge retention. They're gonna be incredibly durable in comparison to these. And something that is probably quite obvious to see on camera is that they sit much taller than what you get with the excess steel or the standard stainless steel on the entry level skates. That's gonna allow you to turn a lot more aggressively on the ice, be more maneuverable on the ice. A lot of benefits there with performance, but more importantly, the, the ability for these runners to be able to withstand the abuse of the game, but more importantly, the way that they can hold their edge is insane. If I'm to throw these skates on my Sparks machine to sharpen them, I have to essentially deburr the blades afterwards, run a stone along the sides to get rid of all the imperfections on the steel before I dare put them on the ice. With these black blades from Step, you don't have to do that. I actually just sharpen these and then throw them straight in my bag. I don't even use a leather hone on them or any kind of material. I just sharpen them, pull them off the sharpener, put them straight into my bag, and they're good to go on the ice. You can't do that with cheaper steel. So the difference between cheap and expensive steel is clear as night and day when you use both and you see exactly how they perform when you sharpen them on a Sparks machine. Now, as we move up from there, there's not really any major differences with the holders, but I do notice a slight difference in the tint of white used. I don't know if that's gonna be because the materials are different, but that's just me kind of being a bit pedantic, but essentially I think these are both the same holders. Difference being the mechanism that allows you to switch out the blades, which is CCM's excess holders with the, uh, the dial. The dial is considerably bigger on the elite level skates versus the entry level. That just essentially means it's easier and quicker for you to be able to uh, remove the blade and then fasten the blade back in. In addition to this, the mechanism of the actual dial inside the holder is plastic with the lower end skates, whereas it's metal with the high end skates. Those are just kind of the differences that I've noticed at a base level with these two boots. Now, when we move up into the actual boot, the quarter package, the one piece shell, this is where we're gonna be seeing pretty much all of the major differences that warrant the huge price tag of the FT6 Pros versus their, you could say, baby brother, the FT670s. Now, the first and major one that you can't see at a distance is gonna be the amount of carbon composite material used in the FT6 Pros or the expensive skates. You get close to them, you can see that carbon fiber weave. This is gonna essentially mean that the skate is gonna be much more durable, it's gonna be a lot a lot stiffer than what we see with the entry-level skates. It's also gonna be a lot more responsive, and essentially it's also gonna have much more better thermoforming properties in terms of getting the skates baked and molding them around your foot. Now, in addition to this, if you're wondering about what the stiffness index is, and if you're unfamiliar with what that means, it's essentially a rating system CCM has come up with to be able to rate the stiffness of their skates. Now, the entry-level skates over here are 150 on the stiffness index, and the FT6 Pros, which are the expensive skates, are 215 on the stiffness index if you're in Europe. If you're in North America, the stiffness of these skates will be 195. Now, before you hit me up in the comments and wonder why CCM has created two different stiffnesses for two different continents, 
I'm unaware of why, I'm just giving the information that I have. But essentially those differences have a major impact on the way that the skates will feel, the way they'll respond, and the way that they'll perform on the ice. Just saying it's a little bit stiffer doesn't sound like doesn't sound like it should warrant such a big difference in price, but it really does. When we look at the entry level skates, you get close to them, there's no carbon fiber weave here. This is essentially still a composite material, but it's a much lower end composite material that's not gonna be as stiff, as thermoformable, as durable, as lightweight. There's a lot of differences there, but essentially what we're gonna be seeing with these skates is the use of a lot more um, plastics. Like if we look at the heel section over here, there's some additional plastics over there to help, I'm sure, stiffen the base of the skate up. And if we look at the midsole as well, we're seeing a lot of plastic integration into the one-piece boot construction. Now saying that, the fact that these entry-level skates are still a one-piece boot is mind-blowing. I actually used these boots on the ice while we were filming a couple of stick videos during the last couple of weeks and I'm incredibly surprised at the performance. Knowing how much they cost, somewhere around $250 to $300, taking them out of the box, I wasn't keen to use them. I thought I'm gonna use them for half an hour, just see what they're like so I can really do a proper video from a perspective of using these products. I ended up using them the entire time we filmed and the second time we jumped on the ice, I had these on as well. So I've spent a total of probably about five to six hours in these skates and I am incredibly surprised at how well these entry-level skates have performed. And if you want to see a video on that separately, I'd love to touch on that in a little bit more detail if you guys want to see it, comment down below. But these being entry-level skates and still having a one-piece boot construction is impressive. Very, very impressive. And they do really perform a lot better than I would expect for skates at this price point. I would have probably pegged them at a mid-range skate if we're to go back two, three years ago with what we had then. These would blow a mid-range skate out of the water. It's, it's incredibly surprising to see what CCM has done. And I didn't want that to be lost when we're looking at cheap versus expensive. So I had to get that in there. So essentially looking over the skate, we're gonna see the use of a lot more synthetic leathers, a lot more plastics like in the heel, in the midsole area. Again, there's no carbon fiber weave in the midsole. If we look at the FT6 Pros, which are the expensive skates, even turning the skate over, you can see just a heavy, heavy amount of carbon used in these skates. You can see the carbon fiber weave throughout the entire structure. Even if we look at the midsole over here, there's no use of plastics. It's still just carbon fiber wrapping around the entire one-piece boot construction. Again, you know what those properties mean, but that's obviously gonna have a much, much higher price tag. Even looking at the heel of the skate, there's no plastics added to beef up the durability or the stiffness of the boot. It's not required because it's just so heavy on the carbon with these particular models over here. Now, other differences that you'll notice is if we look at the skate's vamping, which is the extra material that's placed on the high wear area of the skate's body to stop the actual body of the boot from coming into contact with the ice when you're skating, turning, stopping. This is essentially using a lot of rubbers and very, very hard plastics on the expensive skates. And when we look at the cheaper ones, essentially it just feels like synthetic leathers. So it's not gonna be able to withstand the wear and tear of the game with the cheap skates anywhere near as much as it will with the more expensive ones. And I say that lightly because these are still impressive skates, but we're just obviously touching on the differences in price. So just bear that in mind. Another not so obvious difference with the differences between cheap and expensive is gonna be the toe box or the toe cap. If you look at this one, it's a very standard shaped toe box or toe cap like we would have seen on skates a few years back. Whereas if we look at the more expensive skates, these feature an asymmetrical, also low profile toe box. It's a lot lower, a lot more slender or slim, minimizing on any unwanted or unnecessary space inside the front of the skate, giving you a much more secure fit. The better a skate fits you and eliminates unwanted or unnecessary space inside the skate essentially means the more responsive of a skate you'll have. A tighter fitting skate means that any motions or movements you make with your feet will be better translated onto the blade and onto the ice. So reducing negative space inside premium skates is always, always a really big deal. Now, when we look at the eyelets on both of these skates, going from expensive first, these are gonna be made from brass because it can take a hell of a lot of beating. These types of skates are gonna be unlaced and laced a bunch of times during the week. Whereas these skates over here aren't gonna be laced up and unlaced as much as the more expensive ones. Now, that being the case, these eyelets are made from aluminium. And yes, if you're in North America, that's how we say it here in the UK, aluminium, we pronounce all of the letters. These are made from aluminium before you jump up in the comments there, or aluminum. And that's essentially um, not gonna be as durable as what you get with the brass eyelets. We on time wise, 10 minutes, okay. Now, from there, looking at the tongues on both of these skates over here, the expensive ones, or the FT6 Pros in this case, are using CCM's adaptive comfort tongues with flex motion. These tongues are 
like mattresses. I went into a lot of detail in the review of these skates that I'll link down below. If you want to see the review of just these skates, where I explain that these tongues, putting true hockey aside, are probably the most advanced tongues that I've ever seen a skate manufacturer create at a retail level. And that's not me hyping CCM. They've just absolutely smashed it out the park with these tongues. The adaptive comfort in these tongues means that when you press them, they're more like a memory foam mattress as opposed to just a regular tongue that normally has quite dense felt materials and isn't very spongy at all. Incredibly comfortable. And at the front, you can see it's completely solid at the front there with the metatarsal or the lace back protection that's incorporated. It also has grooves or slits to allow the tongue to completely flex forward without it being able to impede on your ability to get a full leg extension on the ice. Essentially, there's just a lot of technology that's gone into these tongues, as simple as they look. When you actually feel them and put these skates on and get on the ice with them, you can feel the difference clear as night and day. Whereas when we look at the cheaper skates over here, what you get with these is just your very, very standard, very basic seven millimeter white felt asymmetrical tongue. There's nothing going on here that's unique. This is essentially what we would see on skates for the last God knows how many years. And when we look at the lace bite protection, there's a little bit of extra foam here, some synthetic leathers, um, but it's not gonna give you anywhere near as much lace bite protection or just protection on the ice as what you'd get with the more advanced expensive skates. So for example, if you're taking a puck shot to the tongue or you get a stick slash, you're going to feel it in these skates versus what you get with the expensive skates with that adaptive comfort, with that crazy protection in the front of the tongue. Big, big major differences with the two tongues on both of these skates. But they do use CCM's XS system, which means that you can actually remove the tongue. Now the next major difference with both of these skates is going to be with the tendons. Again, this is something that's really hard to see from a distance. The expensive skates on my right over here or on your left on the camera feature CCM's flex tendon with carbon. This is essentially a flexible tendon that works incredibly well with CCM's brand new tongue that essentially complements your ability to be able to get a full leg extension, a deep, long, powerful stride. Aiming these skates at that player that wants to be quick, that wants to be agile on the ice, having a fixed tendon would inhibit your ability to do this. You wouldn't have as great a range of motion in, inside those skates. When we look at the entry-level skates or the cheaper skates over here, these do feature a completely fixed tendon, which of course, when you think about the type of player or skater that might be buying these skates, might not be something that is required as of yet. That might be something they need to work their way up to. But that is again, a really big difference with these two skates. And again, when we're trying to figure out where the differences are in price, aside from this being, of course, a better feature for a tendon to have, in my opinion, it also features carbon fiber inside the tendon, which is overkill in my eyes. But when you're looking at a premium level skate, I kind of see the justification. It's going to have that lightweight, it's going to have that extra protection, but it is a little bit overkill. But that, of course, helps to kind of understand and justify the price differences between these two skates. Now, another place we're going to be seeing major, major differences with these two boots is going to be with the liners. When you look at them from this angle over here with as much light as is going into the skate as it is right now, they look very similar. They both look quite dark inside there with those blue accents that look kind of nice in my opinion, but there is a huge difference with the liners. The expensive skates are going to be featuring CCM's Total Dry Pro Plus liners with Polygen. Now, Polygen is a completely separate company to CCM that specialize in creating materials that are incredibly good at being able to combat the bacteria that creates odor. That's a separate company that CCM has partnered with to help improve the quality, the essentially performance of their liners with these expensive skates over here, which again is going to warrant a price difference between these two boots. Now, in addition to that, these skates also feature incredible memory foams inside those liners. The padding, the protection, the comfort that you get with these skates inside is just something that I've never seen with CCM skates previously. Now, CCM refers to these liners as memory foam with seamless comfort. Essentially, what that means is when we look inside the liners of these skates, all of the memory foams and padding that sits around your ankle and cushions you while you're in these boots would normally stop as you worked your way up towards the neck area of the skate, and then you'd have like a dead zone of just hard material and then a comfort pad that went around the neck of the skate to keep your high area of the foot comfortable while you're turning so you don't have to worry about the skate kind of digging into the side of your foot. What they've done over here now is the liners in the middle of the skate just extend the whole way out and then wrap around the outside of the skates. These are without doubt the most comfortable CCM skates that I've come across to date. And if you go back through the channel, I've essentially touched everything that CCM has made since the U plus days. Even going further than that, the E8s, the E10s, skates that some of you might not have even been born when those boots were being sold in stores. So I'm very, very familiar with what these guys do and these aren't me hyping them. The liners inside and the foams inside these skates and that seamless comfort is just something that is unreal. And anyone that uses these on the ice will, will understand exactly what I mean. Insane tech in these liners. 
and essentially some of the best blinders we've seen at a retail level. Now, when we move over onto the cheaper skates, the liners inside here are just simply a brush nylon liner. There's no moisture wicking properties inside these. There's none of that fancy polygene feature that we see inside the more expensive skates. These are just very, very simple liners that have a very kind of like brush nylon um, feel to them when you touch them. They're also much, much thinner, nowhere near as dense, nowhere near as, as thick and full as what you would get in the more expensive skates. Now, while these are comfortable, if you're the type of player that's gonna be spending a lot of time on the ice, maybe on the ice three times a week, maybe more, even if you're skating recreationally, that's when you might want to consider going up for a slightly more advanced model. But if you're on, on the ice maybe once a week, you don't play at too much of a high level, or you're just trying to go recreational skating every now and then, these would be more than enough for you. I said I was in these boots for about six hours. Of course, that's just over the course of a couple of weeks, and I had no issues with these liners. But of course, if we go six months down the line, and I'm on the ice for roughly six hours a week, that's when we'd start to see these liners breaking down. These being CCM's Total Dry Pro Plus, on the expensive skates means that they're gonna be able to withstand a lot more abuse, they're gonna be more durable, they're gonna be lightweight. They're aimed at being used multiple times, being able to wick away the moisture that enters the skate to keep the player not only the boot dry, but also keep the player comfortable um, while using these boots. These are features that we're just not gonna see inside these skates over here. They do feature holes or per, uh, to get rid of any moisture that might enter the skate, but the liners are very, very simple, very rudimental, and it's what you would expect at this particular price point. And of course, in addition to those points, they don't feature the seamless comfort. Unlike some of the other skates we've seen from CCM in the past at this level, the liners of these skates do come up a lot higher than what we would normally see in terms of the foams and padding inside the skate. But again, it kind of stops, there's no comfort pad. If you want that kind of feature, those kinds of tech, you need to slightly move up with the different ranges that CCM offers. Now, essentially taking a very quick look at the footbeds because they are both pretty just basic foam footbeds in both of these skates, CCM do have much more high advanced premium level footbeds that you can pick up like their ortho move ortho light footbeds if you want to consider that i'll link them down below but the ones that you get with these particular sets of skates at retail um, the main differences are the ones with the more expensive skates are considerably thicker they also feature like a very tactile grippy rubbery surface on the heel of the footbed to prevent any slippage with your foot inside the skates so if you skate with socks on or barefoot your foot will be very comfortable because these are thick and locked in not so thick that you feel like it's kind of taking volume away from the skate just thick enough for you to still experience really good comfort if you're in these skates for long durations of time whereas when we look at the uh, footbeds in the cheaper skates from ccm these just standard foam footbed not very thick a couple of holes to help with moisture management but very very simple now hopefully that's highlighted all of the major differences between cheap versus expensive when we look at the jet speed range from CCM. A lot has changed over years, so I thought it was worthwhile filming an updated version of this video. If you want any other cheap versus expensive videos with gloves, with protective helmets, sticks, comment down below and let me know. But a big thank you for watching. Big thank you to CCM for making this video possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. While we're on the notion of this, of course, you can't help but come across some of the pages online that leak information, that leak catalogs, so you can see. Way better to, uh, to shoot with.